My name is Rodika. I am 37 years old and I'm a lung cancer survivor. My story started uh, in January this year when um, me and my husband we've decided to apply for an immigration program to Canada and we've chosen King's College Hospital Clinic to do our medical. A couple of weeks after we've done uh, the medicals with the panel physician, we got a response saying uh, they found some abnormality on my chest x-ray and that I needed to do a tuberculosis test and to see a pulmonologist a few months later. So I've done the uh, tuberculosis test, which was negative. And mid-April, uh, I went to see Dr. Asif Sattar, pulmonologist here at King's. We sat down and we discussed about the spot that he saw on the x-ray. We've discussed about several possibilities of this being a, a virus, an infection, bacteria, uh, or something more serious than that. So we've taken it step by step. I've had several scans. I've had a bronchoscopy. I've had a biopsy ultimately so that they could narrow down the diagnosis. On the 26th of June, their biopsy results came back. This is when Dr. Satar called me and the next day I was in his office and he communicated me the diagnosis. It was cancer. It was lung cancer, stage 1A. So this uh, opportunistic discovery, everything was detected quite early. When I went and saw the doctor that day, he said he'd already taken the liberty to discuss an eventual surgery with the most suitable and qualified surgeon here at King's. This was Dr. James uh, Atchison. Hi, my name's Dr. James Douglas Atchison and I'm a consultant cardiothoracic surgeon working here at King's College Hospital. Rodica was referred by my colleague, Dr. Asif Sata. It's important to know she's a fit, healthy young lady who's never smoked and had no problems with her health, no problems with breathing, no cough, no chest pain, and this came as a complete shock to her. So Dr. Hutchinson said, uh, come in and see me on Monday morning so we can discuss everything that's happened further, step by step. When I came on Monday, the doctor, uh, we had a consent form and everything, we discussed things and he said, are you ready to come in on Thursday for surgery? So uh, this was unbelievably efficient. On that very Monday, um, I did everything that was required of me pre-operation. So I've done blood tests, breathing tests, I've done uh, x-rays and everything. Rodica's scan and x-ray show on the x-ray a two centimetre rounded area on the left side in the centre. Fortunately, it shows no sign of spread to the lymph nodes. On Thursday morning, um, I was here with a little backpack on my bag. I was um, offered a room with a view, even. <laughs> I was taken into the surgery room, and when the doors opened and I was lying on the bed and they, they pushed the bed in, I felt like I was in a beehive. There were so many people around two people trying to find the veins on one side, two people on the other side, someone putting a hairnet on my head, someone doing this, someone marking some things on my skin, all sorts of things happening around me. And uh, I remember looking up and the anesthesiologist said, you're gonna be asleep very soon. And the next thing I remember is uh, waking up after the surgery uh, with again, a lot of doctors and nurses around me uh, asking me how I felt, if I can hear them, uh, if I can see them, uh, pain, so on, so on, yeah. The lump was found to be two centimetres and I was able to remove it with a keyhole operation with two small incisions, one four centimetre and one one centimetre. The results show that the cancer has been completely removed and it's likely that Rodica will need no further treatment. She was in hospital for two days after her surgery and on the second day she was able to go home and do her normal activities, walking up and down the stairs and do things at home with her family. Now, two weeks after the surgery, she's able to do whatever she wants and is now about to go on holiday. She's able to fly a week after the last outpatient appointment. When Dr. Atchison told me that if on Thursday I'm going to be in surgery, most probably um, on Saturday afternoon I'm going to go home, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't. I am proud to say now that uh, after a few days in the hospital here at King's, I'm a cancer survivor.
Apart from being uh, a wife and the mother of a three-year-old, I was treated with respect and I was treated in an exceptional manner here. Thank you to all the doctors that I come, I'd come across here at King's for all the recommendations, for all the care. Um, and the, obviously a big thank you to the nurses who were by my side all the way. Anyone ever would ask me, where would you go if you wanted to see a doctor? I'd definitely say King's because I was treated here royally. Lung cancer is one of the most fatal forms of cancer and it most commonly affects patients who smoke. If you are a regular smoker aged over 45, it's important to consider getting a screening CT scan to look for any early signs of lung cancer or other lung problems. It will detect something in the early stages when it is potentially curable. And with minimal access lung cancer surgery, it's possible to be in hospital two or three days and back to work as normal within two weeks after the surgery. If you have any problems in terms of cough or chest pain or shortness of breath that persist for more than two or three weeks, it's vitally important you see one of the chest physicians like Dr. Asif Sattar to get this investigated.